higher mountain, I am dust Constellations made of us There's glory in the dirt A universe within the sand Eternity within a man We are ocean, we are men towards us and we always like to begin with praise and worship so join us as we sing praises to his name today I love to praise him I love to praise him 
Let's praise him.
Welcome to the Lehigh SDA Church Connect in Southwest Florida. We're here tonight again to continue our series entitled Footprints of Hope Towards Restoration. Our praise and worship is always such a great time to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon our souls as we prepare for the word of the Lord through Pastor Samuels in our series. Last night was wonderful, and tonight was no exception as we listened to those wonderful songs. I'm so very thankful for so many of you who are consistent. You have been consistent in joining in on the chat and participating. Also along with new worshipers who continue to join as the meetings go on. We are in our third week of meetings and you're not missing out on it at all. We saw you, Jennifer W. You were early on last night from Toronto. Hazel Eyes from T Tacoma Park, Maryland also. And Hester and Melita B. from Florida. Carol W. and Carlene S. and Cheryl G. and Francetta F. and Marlene from Tobago. Welcome from Tobago. Marjorie from Trinidad. Ryan B. from Jamaica. David K. from Barbados. Verla, uh, Vassal, Angelo, Carlene J. from Ottawa. Annette from Canada. Lincoln S. Clover from Ontario. Welcome. Loyal from Grenada. Welcome, Verona D and Pauline Mack. Welcome, Mitzi S and Yvonne T. All welcome, Floyd C. We saw you. Welcome to all who seem to be logging on for the first time. Desreen H. Welcome, Joyce L. Welcome. Ah, now the J. Simone S. Norman S. From Canada. Welcome, Claudette O. Welcome, Lorna F. We welcome you, Lisa B. Beverly G. Uh, Cherry Mac and Florence T and Debbie D, Merle P, welcome from Brooklyn, New York. Oh yes, Brooklyn was in the house last night. We were excited about that. More new additions to welcome. We value each of you, Julie T, Samuel Z, Byron B, Donna K, Nelson S, Delitus F and Angela F and Marita G, Vivita Wallen S, Fenton B. Continue to share the link, SDA, Lehigh SDA Church, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Your prayer requests were also well noted. Annie B, Iona K, Glennis S, Laurel, Courtney, Jolie, Nikisha, Lincoln S, Arlene S, JJ, and Vinke. We noticed those serious requests that you made for family and for yourself. Please note the prayer line number on our screen. We love when you use it along with the chat. Well, in our wealth feature last night with Randy, we learned 15 things we should never do with our money. That was exciting to learn. In case you missed it, for the full story, please go to the Lehigh SDA Church YouTube channel and you will hear them all. However, let me remind you about three of them. Number one. Never co-sign on a loan except maybe for family members such as your child. Number two, never opt out of a 401k. Uh, you will lose that free money that your employer matches. Number three, never allow your bills to exceed your income. A lot of good information is there. You will want to know all 15 if you missed it. Or just refresh your minds if you heard it. Tonight we switch from... Wealth to health. Dr. Loreen Downs is back with us. Her topic tonight is six lifestyle choices to boost immunity. I'm sure we will learn lots more in this health feature. Last night, Pastor Samuels took us further into the intriguing topic of four holding, three flying, and one sealing. The book of Revelation holds these blessed messages which he told us is the revelation of Jesus Christ. He spoke to us from Revelation 7 and Revelation 14, as well as Daniel chapter 7. He taught us about the three characteristics of a seal. A seal, you know, is an official stamp. It has a name, it has a title, and it has a domain. 
He told us that the servants of God will be sealed in their foreheads, the seat of decision-making and choices. One angel does the sealing. The three characteristics of the seal are, namely, the Lord thy God. Two, the Creator. That's the title. The domain is heaven and earth. Makes sense, doesn't it? So tune in for more of the everlasting gospel tonight. The observance of the Sabbath is critical to the gospel. Pastor Samuel showed you documents where men have tried to change God's Sabbath day of worship, but it has not changed. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you never knew that before, now you know it. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Oh, I, I rejoice with you if you have found that out for the first time. Baptism will be on this Saturday again, the Sabbath of the Lord. I encourage you to make a decision for baptism into this truth, this new truth, which you have come to know and you have been receiving in these amazing meetings. Click on the link and fill out that card, that decision card for baptism, or speak with one of our Bible workers or counselors on the prayer line about getting ready for Sabbath. They will connect you with a Bible worker. Remember, we're off tomorrow night. We are back on Friday night. Don't miss it. It's the youth feature night. I'm going to pray with you and for you for that decision to be made for baptism on Sabbath as you listen again to God's word through his servant, Pastor Glenn O. Samuels. That will be his final message to us. Then on Saturday night, uh, we will have our closing exercises and our concert featuring well-known Christian artists, tenor Larry Ford. It will be awesome. Remember, we're off tomorrow night. Friday night is youth night. Pastor Samuel will speak. And then on Sabbath, he'll speak to us again for the last time. Now, it will be awesome, I'm sure. Let us pray about your baptism right now. Shall we bow our heads? Loving Father, I thank you. Thank you for decisions that will be made tonight for baptism. Thank you for those who are contemplating it, those who are not too sure about what to do. As they listen to the word of God tonight, may they make that decision. As they reflect on last night's message, may they also know for sure what God is designing and what God has designed within the everlasting gospel. So that decision can be made not only for this time, but for eternity, that lives may be saved. So send your Holy Spirit to speak to someone tonight to make that decision for you to be baptized into this new truth that has been explained in these amazing series. Thank you so much, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the name of Jesus, I ask. Amen. Welcome to Lehigh Health Spot. This presentation was created for the purpose of consumer awareness and is not intended to replace any information or medical advice given to you by your healthcare provider. My name is Lorene Downs and the title of my presentation is Six Lifestyle Choices to Boost Immunity. We'll be speaking about the A-SMART behaviors to boost immunity. A-SMART is an acronym that stands for A, adopt healthy eating habits, S for stress less, M for move more, A for avoid alcohol, rest, R for rest, and T for tobacco cessation. The immune system is very complex and this is a simplified version of what the immune system does. The immune system protects the person from outside invaders such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, and toxins. Natural killer cells and T lymphocytes are some of the cells of the immune system that destroy viruses and cancer cells and many other immune cells. One first line of defense against superbug infections is proper hand washing, and so we should always be mindful of washing our hands. There are two features of the immune system one is the innate, and the other is the adaptive. The innate feature is inherited and responds immediately. If you've ever touched a hot iron or a hot stove, you'll see that you'll 
finger or wherever you've touched responds immediately with a blister and that's your immune system sending macrophages and cells to help fight the inflammation that's caused by that invasion. The adaptive immune system is an acquired immunity that develops later when the body is exposed to microbes or chemicals released from um, developed microbes such as vaccinations. Immunizations train the immune system to make antibodies to protect from harmful diseases. And many of you may be a, recall that the polio vaccine was developed many years ago and it's eradicated polio and we no longer have polio. Adaptive works, the adaptive system or feature of the immune system works in conjunction with the innate to produce antibodies to protect us from various illnesses. Let's start with the A for adopt healthy eating and nutrient intake. We'll focus on fiber this evening. Fiber boosts the antiviral activity of the killer T cells. Fiber is only found in plant-based foods. Soluble fiber changes inflammatory immune cells to anti-inflammatory cells and increases healing and recovery from infection. And we get soluble fiber from foods such as oats, apples, and beans. So if you want to boost your killer T cells and boost your immunity, eat lots of high fiber foods. Again, they're only found in plant-based foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. Greens and cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli and cabbage are essential for boosting the immunity. There are other foods that boost immunity such as garlic, increases your natural killer cell function and also decreases inflammation. Mushrooms, vitamin C found in red sweet peppers and citrus fruits and many other foods. Vitamin D is one of the most important of all the nutraceuticals for immune function and we should get much of our vitamin C from going outdoors in the sun. The sunlight gives us vitamin D. We can also get vitamin D from supplements and many of our foods are now supplemented with vitamin D. Vitamin A is also important and can be um, obtained from sweet potatoes and other red colored foods such as carrots. It's always best to get your nutrients from foods as a first priority and then supplements if you're unable to get enough from foods. Selenium is important for your overall health and very important in maintaining a healthy immune system. And many foods, um, nuts have selenium, but Brazil nuts are your primary or largest source of selenium with one Brazil nut giving you 68 to 91 micrograms per nut. And you only recommended 55 micrograms per day. However, there's an upper limit that you can get of 400 micrograms. So do not exceed 400 micrograms, but you can see one Brazil nut will give you plenty of selenium and help to boost your immune system. Other foods that boost your immune system, eating lots of berries, spinach, turmeric is also helpful. It's best to get turmeric in its natural source instead of the supplements. If possible, you'll get more from the natural source. Almonds are good. Pumpkins, pumpkin seeds, broccoli, and cabbage. Be sure to stay well hydrated. Hydration helps to reduce viral infections. Well hydrated means drinking a minimum of 32 to 64 ounces daily. However, a good rule of thumb is to drink half your body weight in ounces, which is equivalent to if you're a 150 pound person, you should drink about 75 ounces of water. And be sure to drink most of your fluids during the day. That just helps to prevent interruption of your sleep. One side effect of drinking more fluids is increased activity. So if you drink most of your fluids during the day, you'll be going um, to relieve, relieve the fluids often, and that way you'll be able to get your activity at the same time. Avoid immune suppressors. Many um, think foods can cause immune suppression, and sugar is a big culprit. Sugar is an immune system suppressor and increases inflammation. Inflammation is the root cause of many chronic conditions. So if you want to avoid getting some of these chronic conditions, diabetes, heart disease, and others, arthritis also can hopefully um, be decreased or improved by decreasing your sugar intake or no sugar if, uh, if possible. 
Alcohol consumption reduces the natural killer cell activity. Remember, your natural killer cells are part of your immune system cells. And it also, alcohol also reduces antiviral effect of interferon, which increases inflammation. So you want to avoid alcohol, which is also high in sugar. Alcohol is high in sugar. So avoiding it is always best. Unhealthy fats such as meats and carbs are pro-inflammatory. That means they promote inflammation and you want to decrease inflammation and improve your immune system. Avoid deficiencies of vitamin B12. If you're a vegetarian, you should be consuming a a B12 supplement. So speak to your provider about that. Omega-3 fats are also important to, for the immune system. So you want to avoid deficiency in that. You want to get enough omega-3 from chia seeds, flax seeds. Walnuts are good plant sources of omega-3, but you can also get omega-3 from healthy fatty fish such as salmon. Your healthy plate should look something like this. A good fourth or more of vegetables, have some plenty of fruits of all types of colors and whole grains and healthy protein. Your grains should come from whole wheat breads, whole grain pastas, brown rice, and limit your intake of white flour and white, white bread. I have a saying that says the whiter the flour, the quicker you're dead. So get most of your grains from whole grains and not processed grains. Stress also impacts the immune system. So stay calm. Stress decreases the function of the immune system and increases a person's susceptibility to the ill effect of viruses. Positive emotions have the opposite effect on the immune system. And among Christians, those positive emotions are in, uh, known as the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Indeed, the first of these, love, is known to cast out all fear and will keep your stress down. There was a study that was done on the effects of singing on the mood and stress and immune responses of patients with cancer, their families and nurses. And it was found that singing boosts the mood and also modulates the immune system. So sing when you need to boost your immune system and to stay happy. Be sure to move more. Moderate exercise increases antibody production. It improves T lymphocyte function and natural killer activity killer cell activity, and it slows aging of the immune system. As we get older, our immune system decreases in its function. So if you want to slow that aging process down of the immune system, stay active and exercise and be physically active five to seven days a week. Aim for 10,000 steps a day and make a habit of it by doing it the same time each day, preferably outdoors where you get plenty of sun and lots of fresh air. Rest for our Try to obtain seven to eight hours of sleep per night if you're an adult. Teenagers need 10 hours or even more for some teenagers. Sleep deprivation reduces those natural killer cell activity. One night of decreased sleep can reduce your natural killer cells by nearly 30%. Melatonin is released during sleep and it's a powerful regulator of the circadian rhythm which has antiviral activity. So you want to increase your melatonin by shutting off your blue lights from your cell phones, your laptops, or any electronic devices 90 minutes before bedtime. And try to get to bed the same time every night and get up at the same time every morning. This will help to regulate the circadian rhythm. Avoid smoking, tea for tobacco cessation. Smoking harms the immune system and makes the body less successful at fighting diseases. And in summary, you want to boost your immune system by practicing the six A smart behaviors. Adopt healthy eating habits such and eat a variety of whole food, plant-based foods. Stress less. Practice breathing mindfully and practice daily meditation. Move more. 140 minutes or 10,000 steps a day is a good goal. 150 minutes a week with 10,000 steps daily is a good goal for moving more. Avoid alcohol. Adults need to aim for seven to nine hours of sleep and avoid tobacco use or any smoking. Third John 2 says, I wish above all, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Thank you for your time.
please let us know how we can pray for you by call or text to 941 876 8005 9418768005 Father God, we thank you for the purge of prayer. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we thank you for forgiveness of sins. Father God, we ask that your blessing will be up on this three vaccine that has been implemented for the saving of lives. Lord, overrule and direct. Lord, may those who are in doubt be made free of the doubt and the anxiety and the fear because we want lives to be strong saved God. So many people have died. And Lord, we thank you for the scientists who have developed this medication. We just ask that it will work. And your name will be glorified. And we thank you for hearing and for answering. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Family, join us together as we sing our theme song, God Restores.
tonight our subject comes from a text in the Bible and uh, we'd be going to it but here is a song in most Christian hymn book it is number 606 in ours it's an, it says once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side some great cause God's new Messiah offering each the bloom or blight and the choice goes by forever twixt the darkness and the light I'm going to read that verse one more time and then I'll get to the second verse once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide could tonight be your moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side some great cause God's new Messiah offering each the bloom or blight and the choice goes by forever twixt the darkness and the light and if there is a second verse to it, I don't know. But if there is, they'll find it. There seem not to be any but this one. Oh yes, then to side with truth is noble. When we share her wretched crust, ere her cause bring fame and profit, and it is prosperous to be just, then it is the brave man chooses, while the coward stands aside, Till the multitude make virtue of the faith they had denied. The next verse, my friend, said, By the light of burning martyrs, Christ the bleeding feet, thy bleeding feet we track, toiling up new Calvaries ever, with the cross that turns not back. New occasions teach new duties. Time makes ancient good uncouth. They must upward still and onward who would keep abreast his, above his truth. Let me, let me read this one more time. Though the cause uh, by the light of burning martyrs, you know what this is saying. Martyrs were persons who in defense of truth, they made a choice to stand on God's side, though unpopular that side was. They made a choice to stand on the side of obedience to God though their life was threatened by the light of burning martyrs Christ thy bleeding feet we track toiling up new Calvary's ever with the cross that turns not back new occasions teach new duties time makes ancient good uncouth they must upward still and onward who would keep abreast of truth in the last stanza, though the cause of evil prosper, yet tis truth alone is strong. Though her portion be the scaffold and upon the throne be wrong, yet the scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadows, keeping watch above his own. What a song. What a powerful song. This stanza that I just quoted formed part of Martin Luther King Jr.'s challenge when he had to make a choice to stand against injustice when the powers that be, the powers of the state, the powerful were stacked up against a helpless mob. They let loose train dogs and blacks because they marched for their rights. They were hosed down, beaten up, heads blooded, homes bombed, church bombed. Martin Luther King Jr., in the midst of all of that, decided still to stand on the side of right. And he said, though her portion be the scaffold and upon the throne be wrong, yet the scaffold sways the future and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. And I have come tonight to raise one question from the word of God. The question comes to us from Exodus 32 and verse 26. It's a question from the lips of Moses. Who is on the Lord's side? 
Who is on the Lord's side? I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles with me. But even while you're turning your Bibles, I'll keep that song right there on the screen. While I turn my Bible and read for you, while you read for yourself, open up your iPad, open up your cell phone, open up whatever your gadget is, and we look at the 32nd chapter of the second book, Exodus. Exodus 32 and verse 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. You would recall there were 12 tribes, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Isaac, Zebulun, Naphtali, God, Benjamin, Asa, Joseph, 12 tribes. But here it is in this awesome encounter. The question comes from the lips of God's messenger. He was just coming down after spending 40 days in God's presence. I didn't plan to preach on that, but, but I can't resist it. You can't spend time with God and not look like him. Moses spent 40 days, 40 days in God's presence, receiving God's law. Listen to me carefully. You want to understand there's something important about the Ten Commandments. I don't preach salvation by obedience to the commandments. Well, let me make that clear. You cannot be saved by any other means other than the grace of God. You can't be forgiven by any other matter other than through the blood of Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith. But if you have been saved by the grace of God, you must be obedient to the commandments of God. You cannot have the salvation of Jesus and hate the commandments of Jesus. Are you listening to me? So God brought this group out of Egypt. God delivered them from the hand of the Pharaoh, powerful Egypt. But hear me carefully. When God gets ready, ain't no power on earth that can stop the hand of Almighty God. Pharaoh said, I don't know God, neither will I let Israel go. And the same Pharaoh who said that, seaweed crab had him for supper your hands are too short to fight my God ah but before he met his end through ten plagues God showed his power through the hand of Moses ah the same Moses who was brought up in Pharaoh's house but who in a moment of human error and passion without guidance he murdered an Egyptian. Let me tell you something. God is a great forgiver. If you will confess your sins, he is faithful. He is just. A murderer named Moses? Yes, a murderer. But oh beloved, 14,400 days after he fled from Egypt, 14,400 days, he's out on the backside of the mountain, minding sheep. But by now, 40 years being trained as a mighty general. 40 years on learning all of that. Learning humility. Training by God. Guiding sheep. And God says, now it's time. And so God appeared. I wish I could preach tonight. God appeared to Moses by a burning bush. In Exodus 3, he saw the bush on fire and he said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight. And when he turned aside, the Lord God said, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes. Because when you come in my presence, you are on holy ground. Are you listening to me? I know sometimes we, we tend to trivialize God's presence. We, we can't go before the judge anyhow. Yet we want to come before God anyhow. I went to the Supreme Court. No, 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 no. Don't jump to any wrong conclusion. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't trouble anybody. As a matter of fact, I didn't even do anything. 
But you know when you sit in a certain chair, you accept everything that comes before you there and what comes while you're there. I had to go to the Supreme Court to represent uh, God's cause. And I, I, as you get to the gate, I, I see some stuff on a board. No sleeveless, no straps. And I read them through. And then I said to myself, if we can go before the Supreme Judge of the earth that way, what about the judge of all the universe? So you said to Moses, 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 take off your shoes. You're coming in my presence. And wherever I am is holy ground. And ah, he's sending back. You know, sometimes God has a way of sending you back to face the things you're running from. Because God knows you can't conquer what you can't confront. You can't conquer what you can't confront. And sometimes fear is your greatest enemy. And to get past our fears, God in his wisdom sends us back to face it. Because any time you can face it, you can conquer it. Uh, so he sent him back to Pharaoh. Remember when he left Egypt, Pharaoh said, the day I see your face, you're going to die. And God is sending him back. No wonder Moses said, God, I, I can't talk. You need somebody who's eloquent. G God said, listen, I'll make your mouth. Hush your fuss. I'll send Aaron with you. Huh? Listen to me carefully. I'm running fast tonight. And so he, here is God. Pharaoh, he, he said to, 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 to Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. Pharaoh said, I don't know God. Neither will I let Israel go. And God had done some stuff with Moses. And so Moses threw his rod down. And his rod became a serpent. Pharaoh said, anything you can do, I can do it better. So he thought and he called in his magicians. And they threw down their sticks and their sticks became serpent. But ah, watch this, watch this. Before Pharaoh's face, the one serpent that came from the rod of Moses swallowed up all of his serpents. Are you listening to me? And it became a rod back in the hand of Moses. Ten plagues. The last one, literally Pharaoh called it on himself. He said, if you come back before me, you, I'll kill you. For Moses said, you brought down death on your own house. And that night, one angel came through. Don't, don't flex your fist in the face of God. And so my friend, out of Egypt march God's children no sword no artillery no weapon no chariot no spear when you are on God's side when you're walking in obedience to God's instruction you don't even need to fight your battle just place your battle in the hand of God are you listening to me Ain't no power on earth that can withstand the power of God. And after they left, Pharaoh had a change of heart. Marshaled his chariots, his mighty soldiers, and he saw them walking to the Red Sea. He said, aha, uh -huh, I got you now. But the fire pillar came down. The fire pillar came down, separating Pharaoh's army. And when Israel was over, Almost on the other end. Can you see them hurrying up and hurrying up and hurrying up? I, I would have loved to be there. Walls of water on the right side. Walls of water on the left side. God make a way to the Red Sea. I don't know who you are tonight. You may be struggling with doing God's will. I haven't gotten my text yet. I'm just enjoying myself. You may be struggling with doing God's will. And the devil may tell you, the road is rough and the journey is too tough. But my God can make a way. He makes a way through the Red Sea. If I were there, I'd run up to the wall of water. On my right, I'll push my hand in the wall of water. God is amazing. Are you listening to me? So when, when they were over, when the clean got over on the other side, Pharaoh said to his soldiers, let's go after him. Let's go after him. Pharaoh failed to learn one lesson. God's pathway is only made for the faithful. Are you listening to me? And the Bible said, when he got out there, 
in the middle of the Red Sea. Israel safe on the other side. The wall of water on the right start caving in. Chariot wheels start coming off. The wall of water on the left start coming in. And Pharaoh turned to run. But the Bible said, And Pharaoh and all his army drowned in the Red Sea. And if you read your history, you'll discover there was one unfinished tomb. Never lived to finish it. And so they got over on the other side. What a mighty God. But our beloved, the devil, never gives up easily. He lost the battle of the Red Sea. And he decided, all right, God, I'm going to beat you in your own game. I'm going to join your group. So Moses now is called by God to come up to the Mount Sinai to receive the holy law that God would write himself. Hear me carefully. God didn't ask an angel to write it. He didn't ask a prophet to do it. He wrote it with his own finger. 40 days up there. And in those 40 days, now I took you all this journey to make the point. I said it earlier, you can't spend time with God and not start looking like him. 40 days. And by the time Moses was coming down, they had to veil his face. Glory of God was reflecting from his face. They had to cover his face. And ah, uh, before he left God's presence, he heard a noise in the camp while he was on his way down the mountainside. And he said it, his, 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 his servant said, a sound of war? He said, no, that's not a sound of those who are being oppressed. And he came down and he saw a golden calf. Hear me carefully. This is where I want you to look at the text with me. I had to give you all the background to allow it to make sense to you. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. What can we learn from this question? What is the question teaching us? Hear me carefully. They were all in the same group but they were not all on God's side. What can we learn from the question? Who is on the Lord's side? Listen to me carefully. The verses preceding this verse tells us that the people were bowing down in worship. What can we learn from this question? The fact that you say you are worshiping does not mean that you are on the Lord's side. I'm going to be rough tonight, but hang in there. The question is a powerful question. The question demands a decision. The question requires and summons separation. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. Society is plagued with what psychiatrists call the herd instinct. There is no spinal tenacity. There is no guts. There is no backbone. There is hardly any individual thinking. You and I are familiar with what they call peer group pressure. But hear me carefully. That's not just a teenage problem. That's not just a young person's issue when we talk about the pressure of the group. There are businessmen who made corrupt decisions because of the pressure of the group. There are religious leaders who know God's will but because of the pressure of the group there are Christian believers who have heard the call of God but because of the pressure of the group and sometimes peer group pressure raises the issue of our economic survival and we put our money and, and, and the quest for material stuff 
ahead of the decision to be on God's side. There's always the call for separation. What can we learn from this question? They had all seen the miracle of the Red Sea parting. What can we learn from this question? They had seen the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. They know that God is a mighty miracle working God. But the devil knows how to bait the hook to match the taste of the fish. And sometimes the only reason that's going to lead some folk to hell is because they fail to make a decision to be on God's side all because of material possession. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? And the smallest tribe, Levi, comes out. Who's on the Lord's side? As you read the chapter, you'll discover that Moses got out and he stood by the tabernacle. Oh Lord, have mercy. The tabernacle is where God's visible presence it was a symbolic representation of the place where God's truth abide. So Moses would go right where the truth was domiciled. And the Bible said, let him who's on the Lord's side come to me. To be on God's side, you have to know which side is God's side. Are you listening to me? What can we learn from this question who is on the Lord's side? Well, we can learn from the context of our text that it is more than worship. You see, right in this pericope, we find the building of a golden calf, all because there is a man who... Aaron knew the true God. Aaron knew what God required. But Aaron, just like Pilate, allowed the voice of the people to prevail. Why do I say just like Pilate? Read the trial of Jesus. Christ on one side and Barabbas on the other side. Pilate's wife sent a message to him saying, have nothing to do with this just man. Because I had a dream last night. I suffered much in the dream. He's a just man. Pilate had a warning from God. Pilate had the words of Jesus. Pilate had the evidence standing before him. Pilate came to the conclusion that Christ is innocent. That's why he said, I find no fault in him. Pilate washed his hands to declare his innocence and sometimes we wash our hands publicly but fail to do the right thing listen to me carefully the text said when Pilate asked the question what shall I do with Jesus the crowd said crucify him that didn't move Pilate because he followed that by the question, why, why should I crucify him? What evil hath he done? I find no fault in him. But here's what moved Pilate. The crowd said to Pilate, if you let him go, you are not Caesar's friend. And Pilate chose he had a decision to make. Once to every man and nation comes a moment to decide. Hear me, young man. Hear me, young lady. There is no doubt in my mind that the Holy Ghost has knocked on your heart's door. Right now, inside your brain, inside your mind, you have enough intelligence and God Almighty is challenging you. But, but you are weighing that decision for baptism because Caesar's friendship is pulling you. Pilate, no spinal tenacity. Pilate, lacked intestinal fortitude. Pilate, a 
are the evidence both in writing and in person. And he said, take him and kill him. I find no fault in him. Aaron allowed the voice of the people. What can we learn from the question? You can't allow the priest to decide for you. Aaron was priest in Israel. But even the priest sometimes depart from the plain thus said the Lord God. You've got to follow for yourself what the word of God says. Can I say something else? Most of the people though they claim to have been following God were not on God's side. It's in the text. It's in the text. When Moses asked the question, who is on the Lord's side? One tribe came out of all of him. The majority sometimes is used as a premise for decision making. I've heard some folk come to me and say, well, pastor, you mean to tell me that, that, that so many people are going to go to hell because they don't accept Christ? What about the other millions who belong to other faith? I'm not God. The Bible tells me from Genesis to Revelation, I have only one Savior. Can I tell you something else? He said he has other sheep and he's going to bring them. My responsibility is to preach what the Bible says. And in preaching that, I preach a God whose wisdom supersedes our own, who calls us all to come to him. A God who says in Acts 17 and verse 30, at the times of your ignorance, he winks at it. But now the truth come. He commands repentance. He commands obedience. He commands acceptance. You can't tell God that you're going to follow your great-grandmother because she didn't know better. Let me tell you something. I loved my great-great-grandmother. A Dino Van Horn, long flowing silver hair. Loved her. She had a sharp tongue. But I loved her. But you know, I was born in my great-great-grandmother's house. They never had electricity. As a matter of fact, in the kitchen was a lamp called kitchen something another. But when GPS came through Burnside, I couldn't say, well, I was born and, and I saw my great grandmother using light from kitchen something another, so I'm not going to apply for any GPS. Uh-uh. Proverbs 4 and verse 18 said, The path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. Do what you know and God reveals more to you. But if you reject the light you have, darkness will cover you. Once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide in the strife of truth with falsehood for the good or evil side. Some great cause, God's new Messiah, offering each the bloom or blight. And the choice goes by forever twixt the darkness and the light. You have a choice. And the songwriter never stopped there. He wants us to take a look. Then to side with truth is noble when we share her wretched cross. What do you mean her wretched cross? He knows that sometimes when you take a stand for God's truth, you're going to be unpopular. You're going to be despised. You're going to be hated. But blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life. The third stanza of the song talks about the death of the martyrs. Hear me carefully. By the light of burning martyrs, Christ thy bleeding feet we track, toiling up new Calvary's ever with the cross that turns not back. New occasions teach new duty. And tonight, you have an occasion to take a stand. Who is on the Lord's side? Well, preacher, which side is God's side? I'm glad you asked me. 
God's side is the side of the plain. Thus said the Lord God. Are you listening to me? God's side is the side of the word of God. Well, Peter, tell me more. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Are you listening to me? He said, in vain do they worship me when they teach for doctrines that which has been commanded by mankind. I've shown you from the word of God. I've shown you from history that the Sabbath of the Bible is the seventh day. That the only Savior is Jesus Christ and his way is is still the best way. And if you ask me, if you ask me, I'll tell you, I follow him. I follow him. He came to show us how to live. No, I know sometimes it may challenge some folk and you get upset with me but I've got to tell you almost the whole world in the Christian realm accept Christ as Savior we all know that and I challenge you don't just say you're a child of God first John 2 4 through 6 says he that saith I know him ought himself also so to walk as he walked he that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him God's side is the side of his commandments God's side is the side of repentance and obedience and baptism not sprinkling not confirmation God's side is the side where Jesus Christ said repent and be baptized he that believeth and is baptized Mark 16 16 shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned by the light of burning martyrs. Christ, thy bleeding feet we track, toiling up new Calvary's ever with the cross that turns not back. New occasion teach new duties. Time makes ancient good and couth. They must upward still and onward. Who would keep abreast of truth? Though the cause of evil prosper. I know sometimes some folks say the majority can't be wrong I know sometimes we look at the majority but hear the preacher hear the preacher let the Bible be your guide I'd rather follow Jesus and be wrong than follow the world and lose my soul though the scaffold sways the future behind the dim unknown God standeth keeping watch over his own I'm done but I have to challenge you in the quietness of this place tonight I have to challenge you. Hear the preacher. Hear the preacher. Hear the preacher. Choose you this night whom you will serve. If the Lord be God, follow him. The question that Moses asked, the question that faced every generation, you and I have a choice to make. What can we learn from Moses' question? When you go through that 32nd chapter into the 33rd chapter, God said to Moses, this people is a stiff-necked people. A stiff-necked people. I've given them my word, but they've hardened their heart. He said, Moses, I won't go with them lest I strike them dead. And Moses began to reason with God. Moses said, God, you made a covenant to Abraham and Isaac. You made a covenant to Jacob. Spare them, lest the heathen triumph. And for his name's sake, for his name's sake, you and I are still alive. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? 
To be on God's side, you've got to know which side is God's side. And the Bible declares clearly, his word stands. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And tonight I say to you, you've been listening for four weeks now or more than that. You've been listening. You've been contemplating. You've been struggling with a decision to surrender. A decision to be baptized. You're worried about material stuff. He feed the sparrows. He clothed the lilies. He parted the Red Sea. He rained down bread from heaven. There was a time when the most powerful billionaire had nothing. Listen to me carefully. Sometimes it is the presence of abundance of wealth that entraps the soul of some. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Let him lead you. Join us together as we sing our theme song, God Restores. <laughs> 